next guest uh, has been busy. The man got married. He clearly didn't talk to me before he got married. Ben Fredrickson from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Good morning and congratulations. Good morning. Thank you very much. Uh, can I tell you my Kentucky Derby story? Tell me your Derby story. So uh, the running joke in our group of friends is that one of my groomsmen got a standing ovation at the Kentucky Derby because like the, like that fellow he saw you saw in your video, he uh, managed to sh- get, a little, uh, get a little too excited early in the day and sleep through the primary race at the Kentucky Derby <laughs> and stood up just in time as it was finishing and got a standing ovation from everyone around him in, in, in the in the pit, which is unlike anything you'll see in the stands when you're in the middle of the right. of the derby. So he's he, you, you, your buddy on the video. He has uh, he has friends who've walked in those shoes before. Maybe your buddy and the guy I was standing <laughs> next to is the same guy. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> now that's comedy right there. Uh, were you in the infield at the derby? I was. Yeah. yeah this was. Oh man, in college, okay, and that was the time where you're trying to, you know, it's like a, the biggest game, the biggest competition. It's not the racing; it's how you sneak in booze, right? And you know, we doing everything to, you know, inject uh, juice boxes with a turkey baster to carving out, you know, sub sandwiches to hide bottles in, and of course they all got taken. And we get in, and there's these guys, you know, serving up drinks, you know, off the side from this from this suspicious looking. Uh, tank of some sort and we thought well how do they get that in well it turns out they're off-duty cops <laughs> <laughs> i will say this ben Fredrickson, that i've been to super bowls i've been to world series uh you've probably been to a lot more sporting events um watching the 13th time a horse wins the belmont to complete the triple crown that's a pretty special sporting event absolutely yeah triple crowns are incredibly rare and uh that's pretty cool, man. You were a part of uh, you were a part of history. Yes, I didn't see much of it. I mean, right? I saw I saw the blur afterwards because it was a mosh pit, but it was it was really fun. I would, you know, if you ever, I mean, it's you know, it's a bear, ninety thousand people. You got to fight the crowd and everything else, but we sure did have a good time. Um, all right, let's talk a little uh, Cardinal baseball. Where are we with Carlos Martinez? How how much uh, should we be worrying about him? Well, I think you want to see what he does in this in this next start. I mean, he's still. This will be his, his next start. Will be his third back from you know his trip his trip back from the DL. It certainly seemed yesterday like he could have maybe used uh, a rehab start or two as opposed to just jumping back in. Um, the first one was probably most concerning because you had him talk about how he was scared to try to use his max velocity. Um, that didn't seem to be the case yesterday. He just didn't have any control. Um, he's got to get back to what he was before he got hurt because at that point in time he was one of the best pitchers in baseball um he was he was dominant and now he has he's just looked like he doesn't have a good feel whether it's you know concern about his his uh ability to throw his stuff or just a problem locating he uh if he strings together another a third you know poor start in a row then i think concerns are going to grow but it is hard to come back off the dl when you've missed three four starts like he did um but you'd like to see him locking it back in by the third or fourth one because he was the reason Unfortunately, that they lost yesterday, um, they had enough offense to win that game. They just had so many walks and put themselves in such a bad spot that that it put them behind the eight ball. Yeah, uh, Ozuna finally starting to heat up. That's good. Um, but what are they going to do with Dexter Fowler? Ooh, yeah, keep playing Harrison Bader would be my suggestion. Um, you know, I think uh, they're in a tough spot with Dexter. It's a little, it's getting a little awkward um, because he's not exactly playing the kind of defense that gives you a reason to put him in the lineup every day. Um, you know, Cincinnati was an interesting foil because they've got Billy Hamilton in center field who's not hitting. He's hitting just like Dexter is, um, which is not hitting. And But they're continuing to play him because he's saving them runs defensively as he did against the Cardinals in that game. He was the reason, um, on top of the Cardinals' walks, his defense was the reason the, the Reds won that game. Dexter's not exactly doing that in right field. Um, he's probably a well, he is a negative defender there, um, and the hope was that he would be stronger there after moving over from center. And then at, at the plate, he's one of the worst hitters in baseball right now. Um, the Cardinals still think he can shake out of this, and part of the reason for thinking that is that he's got that contract. But they also have this guy in Harrison Bader who is electric, and he's hitting. He's also making outstanding plays defensively. And right now, I think you've got enough sample size to say that until Dexter proves that he's back, 
you continue to give looks to Harrison Bader, who's a little bit of a catalyst so far this season. How much? How many more years does Dexter Fowler have on his contract? Well, he's got two more years after this one, I think. Ooh, um, if not three. So yeah. I think, uh, I see, yeah, it's it's not exactly one that you can say, okay, chalk it up to, you know, putting him, you know, putting him out 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 to pasture because they've got a lot of money tied up in him, and also, you know, they made a commitment to him as a free agent that he was going to be their center fielder and their leadoff hitter, um, and now he's neither. And uh, at some point, you know, you you wonder a little bit about how it affects free agency for the Cardinals down the line. Um, when you when you bring a guy like that in, a player as popular and as well known as Dexter, um, if that experience goes incredibly poorly, that's not exactly the best uh, the best example to have out there for future free agents, right? Right. Um, it is a competitive position. The Cardinals have a lot of outfield talent as you're seeing in Bader, and there are guys um, beneath him. But I think right now Dexter can't look at his numbers and say that he deserves to be in the lineup every day hitting in a prominent spot. Uh, I think he's frustrated. I think he obviously wants to play better. Um, he's just he's just in a bit of a skid here. The question is, is this the, the fast decline of Dexter Fowler, or is this just some sort of slump that he can shake his way out of and, and have a productive second half of the season? Um, there doesn't seem to be any – any injury concerns. He had the foot problems last year, but those haven't come up this year. Um, he just looks like a guy who's all of a sudden aged, you know, mm-hmm. 10 seasons in an off season. You know, it, 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 goes to the, it goes to the point, Ben Fredrickson, St. Louis Post Dispatch columnist with us on Mondays and with the sports guys uh, during the week at night. Um, this whole new philosophy about, you know, not going after free agents, right? Greg Holland has been nothing but trouble. Dexter Fowler is going to, right? I mean, this, you know, going with the youth movement, there's a sea change and a shift going on in Major League Baseball, and this sort of helps prove the point. Well, there is, and I would add one clarifier onto that. It's going after non-premier free agents. Um, you know, there are guys out there who are going to be hotly pursued by every team that, that thinks it has a chance. And, you know, Manny Machado, Bryce Harper, um, what do these guys have in common? Well, they're all on the right side of 30. Right. You know, Manny Machado is 25, 26. Um, so he's going to have a lot of good years left in him. Dexter Fowler, um, he was on the wrong side of, he was, you know, 30 plus. That 30 plus category free agent wise is going to, I think, be looked at a lot more carefully moving forward. You know, baseball is a younger game now. And unfortunately, it hasn't adapted for these players where they're going to be hitting free agency. Um, in the right zone. For some of them, the guys who have been awesome their whole careers and got up early and shined, it's going to be very very rewarding. A guy like Manny Machado. Um, but for some other guys, they're going to find themselves squeezed out a little bit. Think about a guy like Lance Lynn. There's going to be more guys in Lance Lynn's shoes, I think, moving forward based on what we've seen. Also, there's probably going to be some hesitancy to sign guys later who didn't have that spring training. Um, you know, Some of those guys who didn't have that spring training have really struggled. Um, early on this season. Um, I don't know that that's why Greg Holland has struggled. His seemed more advanced than that. I mean, he just walked, I think, two guys in his last rehab um, outing in, right. in the minors. Yeah. He just can't throw strikes. Yeah. Uh, well, but, that's, but, that's, that's, that's becoming a bigger concern. But there are going to be, there's more going to be more caution about older free agents. And there's especially going to be more caution about older free agents who didn't have that spring training with the team. Yeah, and the Cardinal fans who scream and yell and rant and rave, how come the Cardinals don't do anything in the off season? You know, there's a there's a legitimate reason why that you're not spending any money on these free agents. But Greg Greg Holland, he had a bad second half of the year last year, so it wasn't like he was he was um, you know he was already having struggles in the second half of last year. So yeah, and he, he did he had a really bad month. And then he got actually got better toward the end of the season and it kind of, I think, helped his value out some. But you're right, there was a reason that teams had not picked him up by the time the Cardinals um, paid him. But they didn't pay him a small price, I mean, $14 million for for a season. And some of the other, you know, when you look at some of the free agent moves they have made, the Dexter Fowlers, the Brett Cecil, who is, uh, you know, that has gone poorly ever since it, it started and doesn't really show many signs of, getting better. If you read Rick Hummel's story in today's paper, it, it's, it's quite a conundrum with, with Cecil. Um, he understands why he's not being used, but he's also saying, I can't really figure out what I'm doing until I'm used, but I don't want to be used because I know every time I'm used, we're down. Right. Um, and you can just kind of get a sense that he's just kind of lost. And uh, and, and some of, he's one, another one of those free agents who has really um, kind of put the Cardinals in a, in a bad spot um, in, in terms of where they stand right now. So I guess the question is not do they 
do they go after no more free agents ever? Well, they're going to have to at some point. Right. Um, but maybe the, maybe the thought is that they go after, you know, they change their type of free agents. Maybe they go after guys that are more of sure things and, and, and try to pay more to get those guys. Yeah. Or maybe they go, they, maybe they resort to only the, the Bud Norris's, which has been a great signing. I mean, we should mention Bud Norris is coming on and being really a savior of this bullpen, and he was on a bargain deal. Right. Um, but it's, it's the in-between deals that seem to have uh, hurt the Cardinals the most, at least so far this season and, and last. Ladies and gentlemen, he started off in the mosh pit in the, the Derby. Now he's a nice, a distinguished sports columnist who's happily married now for a week. Uh, ben, good to have you. Thanks um, for stopping by. Congrats on the wedding, and we'll talk to you soon.